Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be talking about the Apple TV Plus movie Tetris. We are joined today by director John S. Baird, um, executive producer and the guy who brought Tetris to the world, Hank Rogers, and the creator of Tetris and executive producer on the movie, Alexei Pajitnov. And John, in in starting with you, um, you know, you had studied politics at the time and when you were in college, and so I was interested in that facet and how that brought you into this story, because you've said that actually, even before thinking about the game itself, that the the geopolitical and social landscape was actually the initial thing that drew you in when you first yeah. saw the story and read the script. And so how did that then influence the way that you started to think about the visual language and telling the story, which is both a, a nostalgic time capsule, but also very much, you know, this this reflection of the political and social landscape of the time? Yeah, so when I first got the script, it wasn't called Tetris. It was called Falling Blocks, yeah, and Blocks being B-L-O-C-S. And uh, I thought it was a very clever sort of uh, title, yeah. So I knew this this version of the story wasn't just going to be, you know, about about the computer game. There There was something else, the backdrop to it, you know. So, as I say, being very interested uh, in politics, especially around that time as a graduate, um, when I sort of realized it was going to, you know, it was set, you know, m- predominantly in the Soviet Union. I d- had no idea about this story, first of all, right? Not, I, had, I wasn't coming to it with any prejudice at all. Um, but when I started reading it and I realized that this crazy guy uh, who just put his life, you know, put, literally he's putting his life on the line to go to, to Moscow and another guy who's, who's risking so much to, you know, to, to bring this game to the world. I thought this kind of turns it on its head because if you make a movie like this in the 1980s, if you had made this movie in the 1980s, it would be very easy to go, okay, we've got the Americans or we've got the West on one side, we've got the, you know, we've got the Russians on the other side and we know who the good guys are and the bad guys are, but the, the heroes in this film that come from both sides, right? Okay, so I thought it was that was a really interesting facet. And so that was a really interesting way in. Um, and then to me, it just so happens to be about the the rights for, you know, the world's most famous and, and favorite video game, in my opinion. Um, so, but it was that backdrop of what you can do with these two. I, I'm a great lover of buddy movies. Yeah. Uh, you know, influences for me have always been things like um, um, Planes, Trains and Automobiles or uh, Midnight Run, for example, right, where you've got these people coming together from these these very different ways of life, very different t- type of people. And there's a sort of clash at the beginning and eventually they get there, yeah? And, and in essence, Tetris is a movie, like it's a buddy movie, you know? Um, so yeah, so so many different facets kind of brought me into it, but uh, the gaming part, probably least, of, probably least of, of all, I would think, to be honest, you know? Yeah, that's that's so fascinating to hear. And 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 Alexi, I've heard you say that initially you had some hesitations about the idea of this story and and aspects of your life being turned into a film because in essence it's it's taking a moment in your life where you know, we see in the movie that there were threats made on your family and that was very real emotion to you. And then the idea of people experiencing watching this story as entertainment was something that had you hesitate a little bit at the beginning. What was it that that opened you up to the idea of this becoming a film and, and being such a part of this project? Well, uh, basically, basically the uh, what, what driven me to, to participate and uh, and what make me real, real, uh, uh, a real proponent of of this movie is that the, that's mainly the story about my baby, about my game, and that was a very important moment for it, because because in the business life of my game that was the peak moment when when this business happened and all the forces which were kind of interested in in the game was was kind of nearby and come together and uh, the 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 fact that part of the movie was was just about this moment were very much inspired me I I love that and amazing shirt by the way I love it <laughs> <laughs> the original yeah. tetris yeah it's, it's cool. great yeah, yeah. That, that's what I had on my screen. I didn't have any <laughs> graphics. So that was the square. Two square bracket makes them make a small square for the for the for the figure. That's amazing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and and Hank, for you, you know, did you have any hesitations uh, at the idea of turning your life and in, in this moment into into a film at first, or did you find yourself really drawn to the idea immediately? Um, at first, I was terrified because <laughs> the 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 actual story, um, the actual story is an amazing story, and it was a real adventure, and I went through it. It was the most amazing adventure I ever went on. And so I could easily imagine, you know, script writers in Hollywood trashing that story and turning it in, into, well, I don't know, whatever. Um, and so I was very nervous. We're, we, Alexi and I worked real hard to try to fix the bits in the script that we could to make uh, Soviet Union seem more realistic. Um, but then when I watched the movie, I was like, wow, not only, not only did it tell a story, but it was an actual movie. <laughs> it's a movie movie. It's like a movie watchable by somebody who doesn't care about Tetris, for example. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I've, I've showed it to people who, who really don't uh, know anything about the game, but, but know something about movies. And, wow, this is a revolutionary movie. It is. And, and John... In, in coming back to the style and the way that you've told this story on screen, you know, I, I love the way that it incorporates so many gaming details, not even just of Tetris, but we start to see visual aspects of other games or the introduction of characters at the beginning where it's like player one and we see a graphic before we see the montage and the clip of who they are within the context of the story. Um, and it sounds like some of that visual language was in the script in terms of the way that the script would be like level one, level two, chaptering it out. And so how did the language of the script start to give you those initial ideas for the different types of graphics and the different ways that you could really use visual elements of gaming within the film in a cohesive way? Yeah, so it was a really organic process and, and probably not dissimilar to when, you know, Alexi is... is, is is inventing the game. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, you're, it's changing all the time, right? And it's moving and it's becoming this, you know, thing and Hank arrives and it becomes something. And, and and I think the movie was very much like, oh, I had 10 weeks to go and shoot what was on the page, right? Now there was, as you say, hints to the game and player one and, you know, game over and, and this, and kind of like chapters. Um, but as a director, your responsibility at that point really is to is to get the film made in terms of the narrative, right? Okay. And then so we did that and then we took it back into post-production. And we found for various reasons that the film had his was very much a Cold War thriller at that point. Um, it needed to have a little bit more fun about it in terms of um nods to the, the, the people who are going to come to it because of the game and because of these two guys, you know. So, and a lot of that was down to uh, the, one of the producers, Matthew Vaughan, who he pushed for for, for that kind of uh, involvement in, in it. Um, and so it was like, when you're making a movie, it's like baking a cake, right? You have to get, you have to get the right ingredients, but you have to get enough of the right ingredients as well. So too much sugar or too much salt or whatever, you, you know, spoil the cake. So that's what it's like making a movie. And, and these sort of eight bit graphic things, it was very much like art. So we started to get excited when, when, when we put them in. Okay. So we, we had a Hank and we had an Alexi and we had a Robert Maxwell and all this stuff. And then because we were missing things like, uh, like exterior of Hank's apartment or um, exterior of the mirror soft building in London, we couldn't get these. We were just using archive material. Yeah. And it looked, it didn't look right. So, so, so by, by, by using the 8-bit graphics for these characters, then give us the idea to do this, right? And I think at one stage we got a bit carried away and we put so much into it. It took away the, the seriousness of the, of the dramatic situation what these guys were actually battling through, yeah? And, and it took away the threat of the, you know, of, of the Marksville's or the KGB or whatever. So, um, so it was a balancing act. So, so we put too much in and then, then we ripped a lot out and then we didn't have enough, you know? So then we had to put more back in. So it was just, it was that. But it, that was a very organic process that came within post-production. And it was fun because I'd never done anything like that before. I'd never done any big visual effects movies. So it was a big learning curve for me. And, and a lot of that decision, you know, with respect has to go to Matthew because he he did push for that, you know? So, um, yeah, it, it, it the movie is what it is. I think it's, I'm very proud of it. It's a very unique uh, piece, you know, and, and it feels though it's a kind of film that we need at this time. And, you know, we need, it, we need something that is true and informative and real, but it's fun too, you know? 
and I want to add a little bit. Sure. You know, uh, the fact that if you think the intrigue in the movie, the business intrigue, it's rather complicated. And uh, and those small uh, small animations, small uh, small pieces from the from the from the gaming world really help to understand mm -hmm. and realize who is for whom, and that's a genius way to introduce such a such a kind of professional business, professional issues like a platform, like a rights, like exclusivity or whatever we have in the movie into very understandable way. So people feel uh, at, first of all, the, the real, uh, re reality of, of, the, of the story. And from the other uh, way, from the other hand, they could really understand what's going on. And that was an absolutely genius decision. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's nice coming from you, you know. Thank you very much. And, and Henk and Alexi, in, in terms of coming on board as producers, um, you know, Henk, I've heard you mention that, that one of the aspects of the script that you felt like the two of you were able to have input on and to help with was in terms of some of those specific details of what was it like in Moscow at the time? You know, what was it like in that specific era of the Cold War? And so for the two of you, what were some of the important details that you wanted to make sure that the film captured in terms of that very specific time in history? for both of you yeah for, for me um you know i'm a i was an international traveler i always go to different places and i uh my i feel what i do is i charm people you know i'm nice to the lady the check-in lady at the hotel make a little small talk or whatever and none of that worked <laughs> i was just you know like why are why, it's like the face is like why are you talking to me you know it's like key here's your key you know and you know it was just strange so the absence of all of that and the absence of color no advertising anywhere for anything um it just felt like i was you know i just entered some kind of a country turned into a prison you know there was that kind of strange feeling and uh yeah that was very um how can i say uh disorienting I couldn't find a place to put my feet. I couldn't find a person that I could be talk to and be friends with. And, you know, at the very end of the, you watch the very end of the movie, me in my hotel room that first night, I was like, that was me. That was like, that's so uncharacteristic of me to be that, like, I don't know. I sound so depressed in that last little bit, you know, I, nothing works. And it's like, ah, uh, so that's where I was. <laughs> it took me a couple of days to, to actually meet somebody that I could talk to. <laughs> yeah and for me the very important feature which which i really feel in the movie is a real development of the relationship we we really start on the cold feet from the very beginning at least neutral and how they it shows in the movie was, was the real stuff because we we become better and better know each other with the time i had to and, earn his trust and uh, yes, and th that happening, but that happening on 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 the eyes of the of the audience, and that was great. Usually, usually in Hollywood movies, it's just set up, boy, bad guy, good guy, and whatever. But here we have the real evolution, and you really feel it, and you could you could see it and feel it. That uh, that was very big part of the movie for me, at least. You know. The, the other thing that, that I think w w was well, you know, but for me, Hank, as, as he was saying, was really sort of informed us about the, the 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 experience of us fish out of water coming in, the lack of color or advertising, and the you know the straight face. And there's one thing I think, Alexi, as well, that you sort of added was uh, another thing I should say is the co the coding right for the actual for the games. There's there's a there's a great scene where where these guys are are. Uh, Coming up with new ideas for you know you know to to to, to make the Tetris game sort of to advance the Tetris game, and I think you uh, really helped Noah with the actual coding and go right. This is a kind of code that you could use for Tetris. It's not the code for Tetris, of course. We're not going to give you that, but it's a code that you 
that you could use and people would believe people who know about the you know that now i'm <laughs> like i true. i can't read i mean i'm totally <laughs> i have no idea so those little details really really help you know when you go down to the finer finer points you know there's one there's one thing i always uh, uh, say is like we wanted to get all the russian speakers um you know like pure you know the, the first language to be whichever part, had one word if they had 10 lines or whatever. And we got so obsessed with it. We did this. There's this lady who's a translator and she's got one line in the film and Hink's walking out and she stands up and she says, translation services, sir. She says it in English. Yeah. But we wanted to get a Russian speaker to do the line in English. So it would be a real Russian accent coming out. And that's how obsessed we were getting. So we were trying to be as authentic as possible to, for these because we had such a big responsibility because it's such an amazing story about this friendship. We wanted not to drop the ball. I'm sure we did in little places. You always do. But we tried to be as responsible and as true to these guys as possible while making an entertaining movie, you know. I mean, I, I love that all three of you have have been talking about the friendship because that is so much the core of the movie. You know, it's it's a movie about the development and expansion of this game, but it's so much about the relationship between the two of you in the film. And it's so beautiful to watch that 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 aspect. You know, we see like the beginning of the film where Alexi's kind of like keeping a little bit of distance for himself to suddenly like really connecting over this shared passion and this shared you know, wonderment at the game that the two of them have and just finding all these linear threads. Um, and so for all three of you, I was I was just interested in, you know, what you really wanted to see reflected from those those changing moments, that gradual development of trust, because obviously we know that it's it's turned into this this lifelong friendship and relationship and, you know, delving into business together. And and for you, John, as well, how you really wanted to capture those elements of making sure that it wasn't just, okay, they meet and they're best friends immediately, but really showing us the the gradual development and growth of what that looked like yeah i mean uh, there's a really nice moment in the film and it's where hank goes to meet alexi uh at his apartment for the first time and there's a lot of uh suspicion coming across the table uh particularly from uh alexi's wife nina and there's a <laughs> there's a great line where she interrupts hank and she accuses him of stealing the game yeah and it gets really frosty but you see, you know, Hank described before how he charms people, yeah, and, and I and I love the fact that he he turns it on his head and he accepts that 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 would be their point of view, and he starts to work out and and and, and charismatic people and people who get their way do this really quickly and they go how oh, what makes this person tick, yeah, and he changes the conversation round to programming, yeah. Because he knows that's what this guy's interested in, and that's what he thinks. And then they both say, they both say the line at the same time. And yeah. I can't remember what the, the line yeah, is. So do not underestimate the power of, of basic. basic. And they both say basic <laughs> at the same time. And you see the little Nikita who plays Alexi so brilliantly. You see the little smile from him, and then from Hank, and then even from Nina, who I met Nina. She's a lovely woman. We've made her to be this, you know, tough, tough our sort of uh, person against <laughs> Hank. But anyway, so, so, uh, that that to me is is the is the bit it unlocks the film. And funnily enough, it's pretty much exactly an hour into the film. It's halfway through. So we do have to earn this, yeah. It's not like he turns up and they're best mates straight away. The earnest and then the payoff's sweeter because the 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 what he's had to do to earn this man's trust, the audience have invested in that, you know. Yeah, I like very much all this uh, house, kitchen, kitchen drinking <laughs> kind of scene. One of the best of the in the movie, I yeah. believe. It's yeah. a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very good combination of all this business and stuff, and almost the warm part of the domestic of the home life. That was very good, very, very, very well, very well done. It yeah, is. I, 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 the th I loved the thing I would love to doing about this film in a lot of ways was I felt we shot the film in Scotland for, for many different reasons, but I'm Scottish and I feel as though the Eastern European sort of Slavic kind of temperament and, and humor is is very much like an old, old Scottish thing, yeah, where they, <laughs> they keep the straight face, they don't let you know what they're thinking inside. They may like you, but they're, they're not going to tell you that for quite some time. Yeah, you're going to have to earn this. 
In the States, everybody loves you and like straight away, hey, you're a great guy, right? You're amazing. <laughs> but there you got to really earn it. And a friend of mine, she's from Bulgaria, and she told me once that this kind of summed up for me. When McDonald's moved to Sofia for the first time, so when McDonald's opened in Sofia, everybody freaked out, right? Because the people who were serving were like, have a nice day. And all the Bulgarians were like, what, what's, what is this? What's all this smiling? What's all this have a nice day stuff, you know? <laughs> and I think as a Scots person, you understand that. So I really under, I liked getting the humor from, from a lot of the, the, the Russian scenes because I understood the darkness of the humor, you know? <laughs> I was like, I have a Scottish dad. I, I love that sentiment. <laughs> that influenced it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and Hank, I, I love that. I love moments in the film where we get to see, you know, Taron Edgerton playing you and and just that connectivity and that that flash in his performance of the first moment that he plays this game. And we see that immediate connection and why he has such a drive and such an ambition. And, you know, in in the telling of the story, you know, we see that there there was elements with your home life, with your wife and with your kids and having to be away and having to travel and everything that that meant um, and trying to put this business deal together at the time. And do you do you still remember what that emotional flash was for you in the first moment that you played that game and, and just what those feelings were that kept driving you and kept driving this ambition? Yeah, so it, there's, a, there's a basic thing going on there. It's, it's geometry at play. And uh, <clears throat> it's order out of chaos. And then that's that's kind of different from other games. My, my other games are much more, I don't know, they're direct and they're mostly destructive. So um, my background is I play a Japanese board game called Go. I used to play it with Yamauchi. The Go, Go mm-hmm. comes in. It's a construct. You're trying to build territory rather than break down something. And so it was the first sort of building game that I that I encountered. So... The fact that it was that and I was hooked on it all at the same time is like, wow, mm. wow, it's real-time Lego or something like that. As a, just, yes. Um, yeah, I was hooked on it. I At the Consumer Electronics Show, you go to a machine, you play for a couple of minutes, then you go to the next machine. Well, I was at the Tetris machine for the fourth time <laughs> and I realized, oh my goodness, I am so hooked to this game. So, yeah, at <laughs> least we have one customer. <laughs> it's one we have one customer. Me. <laughs> and Alexi, I mean, even just looking at your shirt and what the, the visual elements of the first iteration of Tetris looked like is so different to what we see in the game now. And, and it's something where over the years and over the decades, the game has continued to evolve and, you know, just be fine tuned. And particularly as people play it on different mediums, what do you feel have been some of the most important developments that have been made to the game over the years? Because fundamentally, it's still when we see those scenes in the film, it's still the same game that we're playing. Um, but with all the different visual aspects and and encoding developments, what for you have been some of the most important developments in the game over the years? You know, the game is almost 40 years old already. Mm-hmm. So it was several, several big moments for the game. So one of them was uh, definitely Game Boy platform. They both kind of were born for each, were born for each other. So it, it is such a good, such a good Kind combination, of combination, combination, bionic combination relationship of, of of them that 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 it may it makes really serious effect. Then Tetris effect, as you know, as you know, that's a great kind of show and everything discovering some kind of very very important uh, internal kind of wishes and and stuff for 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 the players. The uh, v- v- the very important step was done in Britain when they discovered that Tetris is very helpful for for PTSD treatment. That was a big discovery, and they still still working on the on the version of the game which kind of really helped the people the the people with uh, with PTSD. Mm-hmm. And my favorite moment of the game is the Tetris 99. Did you try this version? It's absolutely awesome when you have <laughs> hundred hundred players playing against you against you and you play with it. 
So, so Tetris has its own big history. The game on the building, have you seen it? In three or four cities, people just just play with the window, with the light in the windows of the of the skyscrapers. Oh, wow. That's 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 what my game is about. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's amazing to see everything that it's it, it's accomplished over the years and and John as well in terms of the way that you've told this story there's there's certain moments within the story and and certain scenes that you have to make feel incredibly tense and when you step back you suddenly realize that we're feeling this immense tension over a bunch of men discussing bus- business deals and the specifics of contracts and yet you have to use so many different elements in terms of even just the way that you move the characters between different rooms and music composition yeah. and how you're utilizing the camera to build that tension um and so what were some of the challenges that came with certain scenes and certain moments like that narratively and still making sure that you were creating the emotional facets and the tension even if it if even if it was a scene where they're discussing logistics of what does a yeah. computer mean within a contract yeah that, i mean that's the big that's the biggest challenge there's two biggest challenges with this film was how you do the car chase through moscow without being in moscow or without actually shooting the exterior of a car at all, how you make two and a half minutes with visual effects. I thought it was impossible. Quite clearly, it's not impossible because they did it and they did a brilliant job. Um, so that was a bit, bit a huge challenge is how do you make people discussing the rights of a video game interesting and thrilling, yeah? Uh, particularly when there's pages and pages and pages of dialogue within a room where, where characters are sitting, yeah? Now, there are several ways to do that. Uh, you can trick people with music. You can trick it with uh, camera angles. You can, you know, with editing and stuff like that. But ultimately, what you have to have, you have to believe that the people in that room are under pressure, yeah? And the only way to do that is to hire brilliant actors, yeah? And Spielberg always says, if you um, if you cast your film right, you're 80% of the way there. And I truly believe that, in it. and that's why all those incredible Russian actors uh, that we that we got in there really, you know, Oleg Stefanko who who plays Belikov and and um, you know um, Igor Grabusov, the plays, evil the you know, evil guy, I yeah, the evil he, guy was brilliant. Yeah, he, Igor Grabusov who plays Trifonov. Yeah, he, like these are top quality Russian actors, right? Theatre actors, there's tradition in Russia for theater, great theatre actors, very much like the UK as well. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis placed on that. And that's the key. It's not, you can have all the tricks up if you, you know, you can have all the tricks of the trade. But if you've got actors like Taron Egerton, like Toby Jones, like Roger Allen, that's how you, that's how you, that's how you get a tense scene, yeah, because they play it for you. You know, and and you mentioned the car chase sequence as well, which obviously, you know, especially because of COVID restrictions, you couldn't go to Moscow and and film it on the streets there. So that was part of where using Scotland for Russia came into play. Um, And obviously a scene like that also involves a lot of CGI and and visual effects work and even just using CGI for extending upon locations. And so what were uh, what were the most difficult logistical elements of pulling together everything that that scene needed? Because it's such a culminating culmination of everything that's been happening up to that point yeah i mean i thought it was virtually impossible because but because we we never shot the car in that car chase there was not one shot we did on a street with it yeah the whole thing interiors exteriors were, were built from images that we took of moscow yeah um uh, so it took months it took a year it took more than that it took, you know it was it was a huge undertaking yeah and you think of the amount of man hours that goes into some visual effects stuff. Well, you think you you add you, you times that by a million when you when you're doing a car chase and relying it all from being computer generated, you know. So that kind of blew my mind because, you know, as you as you probably have worked out, I'm not the computer guy at all. I am that's not me. Um, so anything that involves uh, that kind of work. I have to really rely on on, on others. You know, I'll, I'll do performance stuff all day. I'll talk to actors all day. I'll talk about the intricacies of a scene and stuff. But for me, it was the biggest challenge because I don't understand computers as well as obviously these two geniuses here. Yeah, you need us on. Yeah, on set. exactly. Yeah. Next time, next time. Oh, we yeah. got this. Yeah, yeah. Next you time, like you guys. Computer are graphics? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So I'll have, I'll have to bring you on to every film set now. We, we have computer br- graphics for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was a challenge. But yeah, 
Team effort, we did it, yeah. Well, it's been so wonderful to hear all about these details in terms of everything that went into making of the film. Congratulations on everything. And thank you so much to all three of you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. you.